This is a Photoshop coloring tutorial, and it's specifically about coloring storyboards and rapidly. So the technique that I'm going to cover here is about working when it's a matter of hours versus a matter of days. Knowing that, let's get started. Color palette set to HSB, U Saturation Brightness. This allows you to select any color family very, very quickly, as well as the saturation level and the amount of black that's going to be in that color. When it comes to the brush, I'll just cover that by going over to the brush settings. Pretty simple stuff here. The brush tip shape is set to a 45 degree angle with a roundness of 45 and a spacing always 1% for the smooth as you can get look. And their um, tip dynamic is set to pen pressure. With the pen pressure selected, that means using a stylus, you can simply touch nice and lightly and then push down nice and hard to thicken that up and then taper it off. Really handy for having to get the areas of hair or kind of those little finite corners within the artwork. Now this piece has not been inked. It's penciled. Again, it's all about pace. So what I'm going to do is use an action that's available um, for download via my blog that we'll take and select the layers and divide them up like this. Line art, color, and background. Now the background, you can insert anything back there. Change the paper color, add photography. Color is going to be kind of obvious, but it's important to see this. The line art layer. I'm going to have to zoom in really close to show you this, but this approach preserves all the pixels from 5% all the way to 100%, so that's pretty handy, and you can imagine the power of that when you can change your paper color to whatever you like. Knowing that, I'm going to double click on the magnifying glass to get things out 100%, and I have my fingers on the Option, Command, and Spacebar. Spacebar lets me get the little mitt to move things around, and I can just add the Option and Command key to that to toggle in and out of the zoom mode. So, B for brush. First thing I'm going to do, rename that color layer. I'm going to call that the iPad screen. The client's going to give me the UI to drop into that later, so I just have to mark that area. Select any color. Doesn't matter, trust me, at this point. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to grab the mouse, click once, hold down Shift, and walk along the edge of this proposed screen just holding down shift and just clicking just draws that line. I'm going to tap W for the wand, select inside of that area. I'm going to do this once via the menu and the rest of the times I'm going to use an action. But I'm going to modify and expand that selection by three pixels. I'm going to hold down Option Delete and fill it in with the foreground color. I'm going to add a new layer. That's going to be the iPad. B for brush. I'll just adjust for a slightly different color. Click once and then hold down shift and just walk right along the speed. W for one, select inside of that area, option delete, and then move that layer down underneath the other one. Color, skin. Now because of the color comp, I have a skin value that I'm supposed to assign to this particular character. And I will go up to the hue saturation button. This is going to be 35, 51, 9, 7. It's kind of a tan. So for in this case, I didn't choose any color. I just went ahead and actually gave her the color that she's supposed to have. But that's OK. Bracket down the brush. Go in here and start highlighting these areas. It doesn't matter that that layer is underneath all the other ones. I'm holding down the space bar to move that around, in case you're wondering. Space bar again. And then just kind of do a little bit of this. Go around the hand. And I'm going to want to close these paths off. So in order to close those paths off, I just have to bring that back over, even if it's off the board scene itself. Bring it around. And here's why those need to be closed. So I can select inside of there, expand it out. Option delete, and there we are, and put that layer in the proper order. There's a little bit of a touch up there, as always. Now for the face, I'm going to keep that on the skin layer actually. So this will go much faster than you think it will at first glance. Go up here, go beyond the board. It's another stroke. This is one stroke. And then Believe it or not, her face is done. Close this whole path off by going that way. 
W, expand the selection, option delete, that's that. So her skin is done, the pad's done, color, let's tackle the shirt. Don't care which color, walk right up around in here, all the way to here, and path is closed, expanded, option delete, another layer, and this is going to be hair. And I'm going to just pick whatever, just something dark enough that I can see. A little bit of mistake on the skin, so I'll select the skin layer, hit E for eraser. I know I can flip the stylus over, some of you might point that out, but I think the keyboard shortcut's faster. So back to hair, B for brush, bracket down the brush and start at the tips here, and then move up. And then, same thing. Because this layer is on top, I can't get too crazy. I have to actually pay attention to the border of the character's face. And then close this path. This one doesn't matter. That one's just going to be sort of a stray. Now for this, tricky but doable. Just paint up. Now I didn't choose a very good color because it's kind of blending in with the hair a little bit, but. My eyes are working well enough right now that I can work around that. So I'll close this path right here. For this, just stroke up, fill it in, and then I have to go around the ear. I'm holding down the space bar too, just to move things around quickly. For here, I'm pressing down nice and hard. That's where that dynamic really comes in handy. And in a moment, I'm going to close that path. I'm going to use the mouse for that, I think. There, done. Click, hold down Shift, work my way up, work my way across, and there we go, I'm back out. W for brush, click in those areas. I made a mistake. The reason it burst right out of there is because there is not a path closed. There it is. B for brush, stroke right in there, W for wand, select inside of there, and got it that time. Expand, three pixels, then there we go. Believe it or not, she's done. The background's going to be a photograph, and now it's time to actually add the base colors in, and then it's done and ready to move to the next stage. So the skin is set. I'm going to hold, uh, say B for brush, hold down the Option key, select the skin color, and then darken this. Character has brown hair in the comp, so I have to stick to that. Here's where it gets easy. Take all the layers that you've added color to, select them, and go. Preserve transparency is the old word, but it's lock transparent pixels in the newer versions of the software, so just click this. Every layer that you've had color to. Just simply lock each one. The advantage to that is this. When you have your brush and you were to take, oh I'm on the skin layer right now with a brush and let's say I'm going to do some finite coloring. Without that selection it goes like this. You can go anywhere. With the pixels locked, you go like this. I'm outside this area trying to color and I can't. It's going to stick right to that area. That's the advantage. So, selecting on the hair, B for brush, option, grabs the skin color, add the brown based on the skin color. There we go. Option delete. The hair is colored in. This gives you a chance to go in, fix some of the spots that are a little bit messy, because they are going to be messy spots. They're just. Remember, you're working fast, right? not something that's due in a week. This is something that could be due within the next three hours. So here's a little bit of touch up. Not too much considering. And then it's time to move forward. The shirt. Check your character comps. In this particular instance her shirt's a little bit of this kind of a cream yellow. I'm gonna guess at that value. Select the shirt. It's locked. Option delete. There you go. For the iPad select that. Hit white reduce the gray down, 
boom. There that is, and for the screen we'll just go a little bit lighter. And then that. That is an example of how to get all the base colors in very, very quickly. The next tutorial I'll go into how to shade and add a little bit of depth to this character.